So we've now gone over the fundamental difference between these materials and all of the common properties they have sort of under these common material attributes. Um, but I want to talk now about the few common things that they have under specular shading. Um, and these, these things can be very, very important into what type of material it looks like you have. Um, so I'm going to start off actually with the fong um, and I'm going to yeah, make that kind of a small highlight. Um, and we want to talk about the specular color because that is a huge part of what makes something look uh, plastic versus metal. Um, so right now, everything like vaguely looks like it's plastic. And that's because these um, highlights are all very white. Um, but if I come in here and I've already got like a blue picked out that's kind of like this blue, but brighter. Right, we can change what this material looks like by do by changing the specular color, and now suddenly we've got stuff, especially on the blend, that looks much more um, metal. Now this goes hand in hand though with whatever types of other settings you have um, for, you know the highlights, however you, you work that. So I can make this look a lot less metal by turning down the specular roll off and turning up, up the eccentricity. If I reverse that and give this more of a hot spot, well, now I, I can make this look closer to metal. Um, and similar things can happen with the other materials where you can, um, yeah, you can change the color, but depending on what you use for this setting you can you can still make it look you know like something else um, let me bring this down here um, so yes we can change we can change the specular color we can change the um, ooh, that kind of looks metalish too um, we can change these things up but it also does depend on the other settings right so these these things here there that change highlight size all right these these can have there we go uh, I don't like that little hot spot right there. Um, but they, they both have an effect on what type of material this looks like. Ooh, there we go. Um, if we bring this in here, take a closer look. All right, starting to look a little bit more metally. Um, we can also, I don't have to stick with the exact same color spectrum. That's what I did. Um, so I had, um, it's the same hue and a different, um, I think it was same, full saturation, same hue, different lightness. But I can also, if I want to, maybe shift the hue a little bit. give it a different type of metallic look. So there's no rule that says these two colors have to be the same color. Um, now, if I turn it red, well, that's maybe not going to work out so much, um, but making it similar color, but a little bit lighter seems to be working out pretty well too. Um, so these are, these are the options that you have available to you. Um, if you want something to still remain plastic, then you don't have to bring it fully back to white. Um, you can choose something. I've actually got the same hue, but instead of completely no saturation, I can have it be relatively unsaturated. There we go. I'm also considering both of these things. I'm gonna make sure, yeah, okay. Make sure I have my lights on um, because different shapes will need different settings. Um, but if we really, really want to know what these things look like, we do have to turn on rendering. Um, so hopefully you have watched some of the other videos that deal with rendering or have an idea of how it works already. Um, I have one in particular that goes over what my render settings are because that's very important. But I'm going to open up the render view and I'm going to hit the render button. And it's going to give me the same error it's been giving me all day. And hit the render button again. And I'm going to pause the video. And through magic... Um, instantaneous render. And we can see that this has very different results here than we have here. Um, I have to turn this gamma off. Oh, there we go. All right. So um, 
the gamma helps us see certain things like what's going on in the shadows, but honestly, that's what the render would look like. Um, and so there's a few different things we have to think about. First of all, you can see that I have reflectivity turned on on this because I forgot I didn't turn it off. Um, so we're gonna minimize that and I'll talk about reflectivity because you're probably looking at it going, oh, how'd that get there? Um, basically I turned it up. Um, so if I click any of these things, there are ref reflectivity, um, I think it's set to zero by default. I've been, or no, it's actually set to half by default, I think. Um, I've been turning it down to almost nothing because when it is turned up, it is, you know, when it's at 0.5 or whatever it starts at, it's substantial. Um, and it may not be the look I'm going for, but on this one, I turned it way up because I wanted this to be like a glossy, I don't know, table surface. That's kind of what I was looking for. So I render this again. And now you can see, um, what a difference it made on this one. So that's another aspect of metallic things is they, they might have some reflectivity, probably not that much. Um, so we can do, 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 turn that down a little bit. I'm kind of going for like, this is plastic, this is metal, this is metal. I'm trying to play that game a little bit where they get a couple different, um, but I can't really get that to reflect anisotropic reflectivity. Oh, okay, so it's automatically doing a little bit of reflectedness, um, but I like to kind of see what's happening. Um, so I can bring this back up. Redo the render. And that's a little bit better. Uh, I don't like to be able to like, on something that's metal like this, I don't like to be able to see exactly what the things are around it within there. I like it for this table because I did that on purpose for the table, um, but I don't like it for, you know, just a regular object. You know, can I see the reflection? Eh. Um, and we can also see a bit of it in here now too. Um, so we're gonna minimize that. Um, but before we go any further, and this is kind of part of the lesson, although it was unintentional, um, I'm noticing that the area is pretty dark, and um, I don't particularly care for that. And part of that is just because when, by default, this gamma thing the, the adjustment is on. But I can tell you that when you actually save out the image outside of Maya and like bring it into wherever else, it'll be this dark. Um, so there's a few different ways we can deal with that. Um, and one of them is simply to throw in more lights. But one of the things I want to try first is actually building a space. So, um, and this is going to be very just like quick. Um, this is not great. And I'm going to get rid of the front wall just so I don't have to look at it. There we go. Um, but I'm just building the world's quick, quickest room just to get a little bit of bounce light in here. Um, this is not ideal um, because it's not a real room and the floor is not touching the walls and all that other stuff. Um, whoops. I need to go to modeling and I need to go to mesh display and reverse the normals so that we can see things in here. Um, I also need to go, is this my outliner? Yeah. I need to go to my outliner and make sure the lights are actually in the box. That's not ideal. Um, now we can see the box is, is getting very um, brightly lit, maybe too brightly lit. Um, and there's only one way to find out what's going to happen. I can actually, I can make this box new material, even if I want there to be like a room around here, I can say, you know, be a darker room. Um, there we go. That's a little less, that's a little less crazy. Uh, but it should still, still should maybe reflect a little bit of the light that was going on. Um, by the way, when you click that button, it only brings up the render view. You actually have to re-click the render stuff button to actually get a new render. Um, otherwise it just shows you your old render. And if you don't move your camera, it can get very confusing. Ha ha ha. Look at how much, oh wait, no, the gamma's back on. <sighs> I really hate that this is on all the time. By the way, you can see the little swirliness of this mouse. Um, try not to be pressing things. So if I turn this gamma off, all right, that's a little, I probably should have saved. 
okay, it is starting to get a little bit lighter. Um, by having this surrounding area, I've been able to lighten the room a little bit. I probably do want to add a little bit of a fake bounce though, because it is still uh, generally very dark in there. So I'm going to try a couple things while paused. All right, so while the video is on pause, I tried a few things because um, the renders take a little bit of time. And one of the things I noticed uh, or that I eventually stumbled upon is maybe just turn up the lights a little bit um, rather than trying to add other lights. So I did that. Um, I turned, so this was where it was with the background, which added a little bit of light. And then here it is. I did like a, I did my sort of double directional light trick that did lead to double shadows. I didn't like that. Um, so what I did was I turned off ray trace shadows for one of those directional lights. So I have two directional lights in here. There's A and B. They're kind of pointed at slightly different directions. And then I cut their intensity in half because I don't want multiples of them. Um, but on one of them, not that one, I guess the other one, I turned off ray trace shadows. So it's not going to cast any shadows. It's adding a bit of light to the scene, um, especially around the edges of things. But it's not gonna um you know it's not um making it too uh it's not making the shadows like super complex or anything um so there's there's a lot of different things you can do to um make these kinds of things work i'm actually going to turn off that light just to make sure i'm not like confusing the situation of the rest of what we're going over so i'm going to turn this one back up a little bit do, do, do and then zoom in on a couple of the things that we were doing so we can, can see how they are reacting. Um, because we were, for the Blin, um, turning up the reflectivity a little bit. For the anastropic, i um been playing with whether or not to have the anastropic reflectivity on or not, um, which turns off this reflectivity. And then for this one, um, we don't have any reflectivity, I don't think. Yeah, not really. Um, and then we can actually change the specular color to something much lighter um, to see if we can get more of like a plasticky kind of a look. Um, so then we go back to our render and I've got a completely different camera angle. So it's going to be um, a completely different look. All right. So um, again, very different looks on these three things. Um, this is not how this looks in here. <laughs> this is a broader, you know, look um, than this, but its translation when you actually go to render is two very different things. Um, and while I don't want, or I actually probably do want a little bit more of a hot spot on this one. So that was my fault. I forgot I changed some of the settings. Um, I came in here and I made it much broader. There it is. So I gotta bring that down a little bit, see how that does. And then on this one, what do I want? I want, there we go, highlight size. Um, and I'm gonna use this little trick here where I drag select a specific portion and I re-render just that. And as long as you don't move your camera, it should work out pretty well because I only want to redo those two little spots. Ha, ah, so much better, so much better. Too much reflectivity though. Um, so now we've got a much broader highlight on this than it was before. This is still too ref reflecty. Um, I want that way down. Cause I, again, I don't want to be able to like, I don't want it like an Escher painting where I can see exactly what's going on in there. I just want like a little bit of reflectivity um, so that we can get the sense that it is a metallic surface. Wow. Well, part, all right, part of this is because we're reflecting the light and the end of the universe, um, which is the end of this table. So that is going to be a little bit more visible than is usual. Um, but you can see the different specular highlight colors. You can see this is very reflective still. Um, these these are the settings we play with to get the look that we want. Um, so I can turn this way down, or actually we can just try that. And then I'm also going to come over here and see what's going on 
with this one, which we have not been looking at for a while. So when I bring up my render view, which by the way, if you ever close this and then go back in through here, this gamma thing magic will be on. Um, which by the way, also makes your shadows terrible because it's fake turning up the light. It's kind of like trying to take a picture at night and then blow up the color. Um, there we go. My greatest fear is that I press render on this one of these times and the entire video thing that I'm like watching collapses. Um, so we're going to pause it again. Don't get used to how fast these renders are going because I keep pausing the video so you don't have to watch it happen. Um, so this one is definitely looking like the plastic that I wanted. Um, so it's not reflective really at all. If it is, if it is it's only a tiny bit. Um, and it is, it's, it's doing what I want it to, to be um, plastic. It's got that really light highlight. Both these pieces here are um you have that lighter highlight whereas this is a blue highlight um i could do a better job of lighting these are very dark underneath but even with that th this is feeling kind of shiny and metally and this is feeling a little bit more like plastic um that's that was the thing i was going for to have two things that are the exact same color that feel like they are two different um materials that that is the dream um as opposed to this lambert which doesn't have any highlights on it and it's probably made of i don't even know what um maybe a different kind of plastic because plastics can vary um substantially but if i was to move this and bring this over right so and we're also going to make the cylinders invisible because we can um, render that out. And I wonder actually if it'll render a little bit faster because there's fewer things to bounce the light off of. What it's doing is it's having to calculate where the light bounces. So if you have fewer items, fewer things to cast a shadow on, fewer things to be reflected, um, it may end up looking different. No, I should have made that invisible. Um, yeah. So two, two very different looks and two very different items. Um, I think the cylinders also kind of show it off a little bit better. Um, all right, but this, these are the um, settings that are available on all of your materials. It's only a couple of things. It's just how much reflectivity, specular color, and um, that's it. Actually, that's the, two, that's the two things that are on all of the materials. Specular color, reflectivity. That's it. And um, when when we use these, they we get wildly different results, and that shows in the render. Um, so the rather than what we've been doing in class, which is just kind of throwing all the levers around to see what happens, um, now we can kind of take control over things a little bit um, and actually start to aim towards things looking like other things. Um, so in in the coming projects, we will be more involved with materials. Um, and also what they look like when they're rendered.